Well, we were, we were cut off in the middle of an exciting development, which was to explain how to fit this kind of model to data. So given X1, X2, X2 X3, and so on, and Y1, Y2, these, order, these ordered pairs, the question was how to fit a linear model of this form to the data, which is to find the parameters A and B such that uh, Yi is approximately given by A plus B Xi. And we formulated that as an optimization problem. So we wrote down a, a cost function like this. And uh, We wrote down a cost function like this, and we said that we could fit this model by minimizing this function <coughs> with respect to the parameters a and b. And so this is just a very special, a very simple and special example of a general thing which is done all the time when fitting a model to data, uh, which is to formulate this problem of model fitting as a problem in optimization. And uh, this is a classic problem that Gauss worked on. It's a nice, very easy one to solve analytically. One can actually write down nice <coughs> formulas for the optimal choice of A and B. But nowadays, people extend this general framework of fitting a model via optimization to models that may have millions of parameters. All right, so for example, if uh, uh, in automatic speech recognition, so people make uh, computer programs that recognize speech, and the way that they do this is that they take a lot of data, um, which would be, say, labeled examples of an auditory, of an acoustic signal, which is just speech, and they actually optimize the parameters of some big mathematical model in order to do the, uh, speech recognition. So because of the advent of modern computers, one can actually uh, make a living at these days by being a professional person who, uh, tell, who uh, figures out how to optimize the parameters of a model to fit some data. And this is just the simplest example. All right, so I'm not actually going to go through all the algebra, but the point is that you should be able to see from this equation why it's simple to minimize this function with respect to a and b, right? Because this is a quadratic function. So if I expand this square right here, I'll end up with um, a squared and b squared and ab. And when I perform this sum, um, those quadratic terms will have uh, c coefficients in front of them which have summations in them. They may be big, complicated looking expressions. But the bottom line is that we have a quadratic function in A and B. And so by taking derivatives with respect to A and B, we can minimize this function. So what we get then um, are the following equations. And I'll explain what some of this notation means. So lecture notes will be, will be posted online. Um, actually, before, well, OK, we'll, we'll do some administrative stuff in the middle of the lecture when everyone is here. So uh, these are two equations that you get by minimizing this function. All right. So why are there two equations? Well, basically, um, the way I minimize with respect to E is I take the derivative with respect to A, and I set that equal to 0. And that gives me one equation. And I take the derivative with respect to B, and I set it to 0, and that gives me the other equation. All right. So I'm not going through all the steps. But you can imagine that I'd be able to carry out this, uh, this reduction uh, if you just went through and expanded, uh, took the derivatives and so on, and did the algebra. Now, I should explain then what uh, these quantities are. And so x in angle brackets is uh, representing the mean, the sample mean of xi. So we just add up all the x's, and um, we divide by the number of the data points, m. And similarly, 
Um, y in angle brackets is given by that. Um, Okay, so something interesting has appeared here, which is that we, we were solving this, this modeling problem, how to fit some data, and what ends up inside these equations, these are simultaneous equations for A and B. We need to solve these equations for A and B to find this minimum. But the coefficients of A and B in these equations are statistics. Right? So these are very standard statistical quantities. And this is called the mean or average and this is called the second moment right what's the quote lies lies and damn statistics where does that quote come from three ways to mislead the public um, so I think people pretty much have an intuition about what this means, right? Um, we'll see later on, the second moment doesn't have as straightforward an interpretation as the mean, but we'll see later on when we construct the variance um, that uh, that has a, a, a nice interpretation as the uh, measuring the fluctuations about the mean. Um, actually, I don't need a y squared. That's not even here. What I do need is this. I need this. So let's <coughs> last quantity. And that's generally called the correlation. All right, so this, these are just a bunch of formulas. Um, they look a little bit uh, complicated, but after all, this is a fairly simple set of equations. You should have confidence you can, you can solve these, right? So let's, let's, uh, let's solve for A in terms of B. And we end up with that. And that, that means that we can eliminate A from this equation by making the substitution. If we put this into here, we can eliminate the A, and we'll be left with an equation that just contains B. So let's do that. This equation here becomes uh, Y Right? And I can multiply out this quantity here. And this quantity is just the product of the means minus b times the square of the mean. And then I can move this to the right hand side by subtracting. And what I'm, en what I'm ending up with is that, uh, let's start over. So I've just collected the terms that are following B. And that means we can eliminate, we have it now, we've solved for B. And we found that B is a ratio of two quantities. <laughs> so these two quantities have special names. This is called 